Uh, this is John Gonzalez again from Fan Guitar and Ukulele. And uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is how, uh, with the Tuni Uke adjustable saddle system, how you can go about lowering your action a little bit. Um, it already comes with a second set of these saddles that are just a slight bit higher if you need to raise it up a little bit. But if you prefer a little bit lower action, you're going to actually have to manually lower each one of these saddles. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you know, it doesn't require a whole lot of tools and it's certainly something that you can do at home. Um, the one thing, the one skill you kind of need is to be able to take a look and sight the neck and um, determine, you know, how flat the fretboard is because that's going to really be the deciding factor on how low you can feasibly come down before you get a little bit of fret buzz. Um, it's always a balancing act as far as adjusting action in that way um, and it really depends more on your playing style than anything else. Uh, if, you play, if you're a little heavier handed player you're going to need a little bit higher action. If you play a little lighter, well, you're going to have a lower threshold that's going to work. But, um, you know, at any rate it gives you a, a second option as far as manipulating the feel of the instrument and, um, you know, easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. So yeah, the next question is how do you evaluate the neck? I mean, it takes some experience to be able to do this, but what I do is I just kind of sight, you know, as if I'm looking down the side of the fretboard. And what I'm looking for is a fairly flat plane reflected, you know, as far as like the top of the frets. Um, you don't want to see like waviness or like any kind of like a, a little twist like both sides of the fretboard should look really very similar um, you know I mean it, it's not the end of the world if there are some fretboard issues but you need to uh, at that point you're gonna have to level the frets which is well, relatively easy especially on a uke because it's a flat fretboard it doesn't have a radius to it um, and I'll probably do a video on that down the line but um the more experience you get sighting in the neck, the more you'll uh, kind of gain an understanding of how that's going to translate to the level of action that you're going to be able to achieve. Um, so now that you hopefully have an opinion about how far you're going to go down, you can start moving down in small increments. I mean, I think you do have a backup set of these that come with it, so it's not the end of the world. And I mean, you can get them from Lonnie Kai if you need to. But uh, kind of going slowly and then slipping it back in and checking the action to see how you know how much of a threshold you think you have, and you can kind of go through each one individually. And I mean, since it's a flat fretboard, you want to end up with a relatively flat, you know, string profile here at the bridge to reflect the string profile over the fretboard. But um, you do have some leeway, like the C strings, quite a bit bigger radius than the A string. So you know you you have some play within the context of that hopefully flat radius that you're going to achieve. But um, you know the best thing is just go slowly and take off little bits, um, and you know slip it back in and check it out and see what you think. So um, let me show you how to do that. So what I like to do is you know kind of make some little reference mark you know just I'll put a little bit of pencil on the end of it so as I sand off some of the top of this I can sort of see how much I've sanded off um, it's a good time to you know there's a little notch in here that the string guides through and it's a good time to maybe file that a little bit deeper um, you know this file is much too big but you know just notching it a little bit deeper so as you remove material from the top you don't you know lose that string guide but you know even this ridiculously large file is gonna be good enough just use the edge and you just wanna keep that string guide notch um, what I usually use is uh, you know like a belt sander but I mean I'm gonna assume that not everybody has a belt sander so all I'm gonna do you know, I'm kind of trying to do this with as few tools as possible so that it's accessible for, uh, you know, anybody out there that maybe doesn't have. I mean, you can get a sheet of sandpaper and, you know, stick it to the desktop or something and it's good enough. But, 
you know, I'm just gonna slowly file this down. It, it's they it comes down pretty quickly. Um, different grades of sandpaper will kind of speed up or slow down the results. You wanna keep changing the angle that you're sanding at so you're not magnifying like the human error factor. And you wanna strive to keep it pretty flat. And if you see that you're going down through the, the little guide, well, you gotta stop and, you know, cut that little string guide notch a little bit deeper. You know, just go slowly. It, it'll come down quickly and you can always come back to it again, you know. So there we go. I've come down almost through the string guide mark and I'll just touch it up a little bit to keep that going. And then I can slip it back in and see how it's coming along. There you go. And then I can look, sort of look at it and check it out and you know I can go a little bit farther um, and just gradually move down lowering the action. What you don't want to do is go so low that you lose this break angle if you see the string passing through the saddle and then it's angling back slightly where it ties onto the bridge, you don't want to go so low that that becomes an almost straight or flat angle because then you'll get a little buzz in the saddle. So that's really also a determining factor of how low you can go down with these things. But just go slowly and, you know, if you make a mistake, well, you have another set of these that come with the instrument so you get a second chance. But um, it's one of those things that the more you do it, the more comfortable you get and the more adept you are at looking at it and determining where, you know, where your thresholds for adjustment lie. But, um, you know, it's really a pretty easy process and it's certainly something that anyone with a little ingenuity is going to be able to do. And, you know, the great thing about it is you can always pop them all out, put the new ones in and start over again. And, um, you know, I'm sure you can get these things from Lanikai if you need more saddles or whatever. But, um, yeah, so that's it. How to adjust the Tunayuk saddle system um, to lower the string action. Mm -hmm.